Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your co-hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Arthur Bergeron. Our guest today is none other than my co-host, Grace O'Donnell. Stay tuned. Hi, welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I am Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell, biggest firm outside of Boston. Because there are 70 of us there, everybody does what they like. I like doing elder law. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. You may have seen them in one of my seminars where I always talk about Frank and Mary. Their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. You get the joke if you're old enough, you're this age. And the fact that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. If you live in Framingham, that means you want to die in Framingham. You don't want to die and go, do, or go live with your kids in California and Texas and die there. You want to be here. This is where your friends are. It's where your community is. It's the people you know. So the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about? so you can stay right here in Framingham for the rest of your life. My, my co-host in this show is Grace O'Donnell, who finds all these great people to talk about all these great programs. So Grace, who is our guest today? <laughs> Hi, Arthur. Today, I'm going to be your guest. This is so exciting. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a long time. This is very big, because you're just knowledgeable about everything, right? Well, but today, we're going to be talking about something very specific, because you've been spending a lot of time on it, right? Yes. We're talking about? about the 2020 census that the 20... is coming up in just a few months now. It's yeah. right around the corner. Because on... it is 2020, after it, all. It is. Yes, yes. yes. And, and so, by the way, and it's going to start like w w when? Well, the schedule for the census, yeah. they will be sending out postcards to people yeah. in mid-March. In mid-March. And I will get into more of those details. So that's what, about that's what we're going to talk about. But I just sure. wanted to kind of get a sense of, for, so for folks who are thinking about this, this is a very relevant program. Absolutely. This is like a really relevant. So can you just kind of talk about the census a little bit? So, we, it, we, you know, it, a lot of times people are doing the local census like every year, but this is like the big deal, right? The federal census. I'm, so glad, I'm glad you mentioned about the about local that. census, yeah. Arthur, because in fact, uh, all cities and towns do a local census, and it's just as important for people to complete those census information for their cities and towns as it is to complete the federal census. So, by the way, does that mean they're going to do two this year? If you're at, if yes. you're at, yes? Most okay. likely. I so think the fact I, you've done one doesn't mean you can't do the other one. Right. We encourage you to do both. Okay. Your cities and towns get their information about you for their own local purposes. Yep. The federal yep. census needs information from you for larger purposes, and the federal census is not allowed to share their information with anybody. So that's one of the key pieces we want to make sure people realize their information is confidential on an individual basis. The current confidentiality laws that are in place with the census are the strongest we have ever had. No one from the census can reveal anyone's personal information to any other person, not even another federal agency. Even if there were a court order, the census people cannot give identifying individual information to anybody. Um, it, it doesn't matter what their reason, they just will not do it. There is an oath that census workers take for life that they are bound to that oath and they respect that very highly. So you should be participating, you need to be participating. It's important that every one of us participates in the census to make sure we all are counted. The census data mm -hmm. will be analyzed by larger groups and identify, you know, there's a, a preponderance of people of a certain age in this segment of the country, yeah. or there seem to be more births happening in another segment. That's what the federal census is really about, giving that bigger picture. Which is a really important, that's a, that's a really important picture. It right? is. So can we, can we just talk about that? So what, like, sure. 
why is why is it so important to like the folks who are here? Why do I, you know, if I'm skeptical about government and all these people, you know, why do I really want to be, in, you know, or I'm just busy, you know, I'm I'm like, why do I have to do this? Well, yeah. for one thing. It won't take you much time at all to complete the census, and we'll get into that a little further okay. on. But as far as the importance of it, over $800 billion, billion with a B, is decided based on census figures. That's now how that's, that money gets cut up. That's how it gets decided at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local level. And another big piece of that is that our representation at the federal level, state and local level also get determined by the census numbers based on the number of people who are responding to it. So it's really important that everybody take that time. And if you're just in one individual, it will take you less than five minutes to fill out the census. If you have a larger family, it will take you a little bit longer because the same questions get asked for each person in the family. But some of the larger categories of funding um, resources that get identified by the federal census are affordable housing, transportation, and health care. Those three categories touch all of us. All of us. That's right. right. So right. just the amount of money that Massachusetts may be getting, the amount of money that Framingham may, may be getting, specifically in terms of housing programs right. and stuff, it's dictated by how many people are here and who's here. Exactly. In Massachusetts, we have information from fiscal year 2016. Massachusetts got more than $22 billion that was divided up based on the census for the kinds of programs like Medicaid, student loans, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, otherwise known as food stamps, affordable housing, highway planning and construction, uh, Head Start programs, Title I grants, all of these programs in Massachusetts relied on the numbers from the census in order to divide up that $22 billion. Which is, a, that's, so that's a huge deal. It is. So, so it's a big deal, you ought to be doing it. What are some of the obstacles? Yeah, well, we, could, uh, among this, this year's yeah. challenges are the funding for the census this year was delayed. There is less funding at the federal level for the 2010 census than there was for the previous census. And if you stop and think about it, there are many more of us here than there were 10 years, Ten years ago. ago. Right. So right. we're behind the eight ball on that. There was also a change in leadership at the census, so things were slower to roll out. And there is this whole climate of fear and distrust of government. So we're, we're kind of doing an uphill battle here, but I think a lot of it comes to do with educating the public, making sure that they realize just how important it is right. that they be counted. And every one of us does matter. We should all be counted. And we all want to be counted. Right. So, right. It, you know, I remember, so I've, you know, we all kind of heard about this a little bit on TV, right? And, and we talk, they've talked a little bit about the fact that you always think of the census as the guy that knocks on your door and you're kind of filling out the form. But that there might. But I, I was. It seems to me that th there's another alternative way that you can deal with the census this year. Exactly. This year, it will be the first time that the census is going high tech. So, most of the responses in the past were all done on paper and right. handed in. And if you didn't uh, respond, then people went door to door knocking uh, yep. to get your responses. Oh, because you originally would get something in the mail. Everybody would get right. something in the mail, which now nobody gets anything in the mail. Well, uh, well, well, this, well we can talk the about census, that. With the census in yeah. March, people will get a postcard to start off inviting them to participate in the census. They will be given a unique identifier that connects with that specific address. Yeah. So not with the person who is living there necessarily because that may have changed over the 10 years that the last census was done. Right. But it gets yeah. sent to that address. And address. whoever is living at that address and all of the people at the address, yeah. you want to be counting those people. I see, I see. So that unique identifier will allow somebody to log on either by way of their computer a smartphone or a tablet and be able to answer the census and their answers will be in like that. What that does is help reduce the number of people who will need to be going door to door, knocking on people's doors. It will reduce the postage needing to mail back responses right. and it will get the data into the census much quicker than it ever was before. So if for us as, as people, folks dealing with seniors all the time, you know that I'm not very literate about some of this mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So if I get one of these 
identifiers or whatever, and I'm really kind of scratching my head, can I call you? Absolutely. Can I call somebody? Yep. How, what, what would I do? The Callahan Center here in Framingham has a dozen computers available in our computer center for mm -hmm. anyone to access at any time except for when a computer program is uh, a, a computer class is being is conducted. So we will plan to have those computers available for people oh. to log in and we will have every one of the computers set up with the census.gov website yep. right there so people can just go right in. We will also have staff assisting people in mm -hmm. case they do have any confusion with it. The beauty of doing it this way online, Arthur, is also that the census has arranged for numerous other languages to be available for people. So I if see. I speak oh, a language yeah. other than English, I can click on the language that I speak and be able to get that in the language that I understand. That's a big deal. It That's is really terrific. a big deal. We are becoming a much more uh, diverse community, much more diverse country, many languages are being spoken here. I think the more we can reach out to everyone, the better. Right, and the more comfortable you can have people, even right. even though, I mean, I get it, that you know, there's always this kind of concentration of people here, they should be speaking English, and that's fine. It, it, maybe you, you want them to be speaking English to you, but in terms of having to answer census questions, which could be complicated, you want them to get it right, right? right? So you want everybody to be kind of reading this stuff in their own, in their native language. Sure. And the, I guess the other thing I w it would seem, once again, deal from are both dealing with seniors, a lot of folks have got those, those laptops that their kids gave them. Mm -hmm. They've never opened them, <laughs> right? And they just don't want to deal with this stuff. So, so for, for people who may not be using the, the machine regularly, to know that they have the option and it, it seems to me recently we even had a guest here on the show talking about how to get to the Callahan Center if you need to get to get the Callahan Center right. with, for transportation purposes. If you have the option to be able to do it there, right, and not have to hassle any of this other stuff is like a big deal. Right. In addition to the Callahan Center, also Framingham Public Library plans to have their computers available to the public. Yep. And so far I know that Chillman House also will do that. Chillman it's, House. It's, yes, uh, that's one of the um, housing locations here in Framingham. I see. And it see. could be as we get closer to the census date, more organizations might make their computers available to us. So I would say if you have any questions about this, give us a call at the Callahan Center, read right. the local paper. We will be putting more information there about how people can access assistance. Based on what folks are talking about, are there particular, any particular populations that either historically or this year that folks are thinking are going to be really hard to count? Yeah, uh, traditionally people who live in large urban or rural areas where there are a large population of people who are low income, yeah. people of color often don't complete the census, mm -hmm. people who English is not their native language, people who are immigrants even if they're residents of Massachusetts, um, and again, whether you are an immigrant, uh, whether you are a citizen, it doesn't matter. We want to count everybody because what we do with the data is figure out how much emergency services do we need to provide? Right. How many police and fire do we need to have given what our community composition is? Uh, how many schools do we need to have based on how many small children were listed as being on the census. So there are a lot of details that go into the long range planning for cities and communities as far as being able to meet their, their residents' needs, whether they are a, a citizen or not, that is not an issue. So we want right. to encourage everyone who lives in Massachusetts to fill this out. Some of the other groups that often go undercounted are people who are recently released from prison, mm -hmm. people who are living in nursing homes or people away at college, people with disabilities, people who are elderly, people in the LGBTQ community, all of these are people who tend to go um, not reporting the census and we are encouraging everyone, every one of you matters, please have yourself counted by filling out this form. It will take maybe five minutes of your time. And so, kind of parenthetically, if I'm a, if I'm a, a, a caregiver, right, mm -hmm. or the daughter or the, you know, the, the designated daughter or son and I'm talking with Ma or whatever, I should be trying to encourage her to do it too, Absolutely. right? Because I could really help her. If I know that she got this postcard, mm -hmm. right, and that, and that she could really click on, 
I'm really the person that could help her really do it. Right. The right. census will be mailing a limited number of those questionnaires mm -hmm. to areas where they know, for instance, that the Wi-Fi is non-existent or the cell service is oh, spotty. Yeah. So they will be mailing to places like out certain areas of the Berkshires yeah, where it's hard here. to get coverage. But, that's but, not here. but if somebody would much prefer to actually handwrite it, they can request that. And the that original postcard that comes will give people those options oh, that I they see. can choose. So I was just going to say, how do they find out? But that information is going to be on the postcard. Exactly. So is Massachusetts doing anything special regarding encouraging participation compared to like other states? I remember reading, I remember reading there was a piece uh, on the contrast between California and and, uh, and Texas, where they have they have similarly gigantic populations, and California is spending fifty million dollars to make sure that everyone's counted. Mm -hmm. Texas is spending zero. So is, what, so is Massachusetts doing anything special? Well, there is an organization that was put together by 13 collaborators. It's known as Massachusetts Census Equity Foundation. Mm -hmm. They um, are pooling together their resources. They have put together over $2 million so mm -hmm. that they can encourage more organizations to do outreach efforts, and they are collaborating with the Secretary of State, with various organizations and foundations in across Massachusetts to make sure that all of us are working together in getting more people to participate. They're also sharing information with us as they get updates from census.gov, making sure that we are aware of any issues that are out there, any concerns people have, so that we can uh, allay people's fears of any part of it. Right. Just and, and, and this Massachusetts Census Equity is part of one of the initiatives we have going on here in Framingham as far as reaching out to the faith-based groups. I was just going to say, are there any particular things that you're doing here yep. in Framingham? Yeah. You're doing faith, so it's faith-based? Right. We uh, formed a collaboration with Edwards Church here mm -hmm. in Framingham to be able to reach out to each of the other churches, synagogues, mosques, temples. And we have hired a couple of coordinators, both are bilingual, one in Spanish, one in Portuguese, and they are helping us to spread the word, doing presentations, educating people about all of these details as far as why it is so important for people to take part in the census. And to date, we have reached uh, almost 200 people. And what I can say is we start the, the question at the beginning of the presentation in saying how many of you plan to participate in the census and we get a you know maybe half the people present willing right. saying yes I'm going to yep. do it after the presentation is done we ask the question again invariably twice as many or three times as many people are now raising their hands because they understand just how important it is and that's what we're trying to make sure people get. So if people wanted to go to one of these presentations, how would they kind of find out where the presentations are happening? Well, we are scheduling them through all of the faith-based groups in Framingham. Mm -hmm. The coordinators are working with each of those church leaders now, and as each community is able to make space in their schedule, we are um, arranging for that. And we are doing it not only when services are being held, but also we're available on the week weekends and evenings, potentially. Yep. So if somebody would like it brought to their uh, particular faith community, we encourage them to speak to their rabbi, their minister, their priest, um, and encourage them to have us open the doors to us. Because the main thing is, is to know that there's still time. I mean, there isn't exactly. a lot of time, but there's still time to really kind of do all of this stuff. So exactly. is, has Framingham, has, has the city government, you know, kind of globally been really focusing on this? Have they been doing anything special? Absolutely. Is there a, is there a census czar? There's well, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I'll, You're I'll, not, are you it? I, I am no, not it. No, I, I am no. a bit player. You're a czarina? Uh, but, but <laughs> a czarina? No? no? That right. sounds pretty good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll right. take that title. Uh, Ala Abu Salo, who is the citizen participation officer for the city of Framingham, mm -hmm. heads up the uh, Framingham's complete count committee. And, and he's the citizen participation officer? Yes. What's that? She encourages... Once again, in parentheses, yeah. what is that? She encourages more people to play an active role in their community government. And, you know, we have a, a wonderful core group of people who were part of our town meeting members yeah. who are now dispersed throughout the community. And with our different form of government now as a city, we are 
have less of that um, very visible presence of the town meeting right. members, but there are still ways that people can be involved in their community and have a say in it. And so that is part of Allah's role, is yeah. to encourage more more input from people. And I suppose that's a real trait. I know that, you know, you know certainly for watching, having watched it from a distance, living in far away from Marlboro, watching that whole discussion about moving to the city form, that was always one of the, with the perceived negatives was that you, you, you had this huge variety of people in representative town meeting that, that were therefore involved. And, and, and so how do you keep that up, right? Mm -hmm. So but the, the notion of consciously trying to make that happen, right? Right. It, it, it is really important. It's it really is. important. Yeah. But I suppose the census is the kind of thing that you could kind of rally around. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a citywide thing that absolutely everybody benefits from. You, you hit the yeah. nail on the head. Right. Everyone everybody benefits, benefits. Right. by taking part in the census. As I mentioned, all those different programs that affect everyone of every age, we all benefit from that. And if we all fill out this census, then yep. we will all be counted. We'll be able to say exactly how many people live here in Framingham. We know it's somewhere around 70,000 or so right. based on the 2010 census and the number of people who have come in since then. But it could be we might be as many as 80,000 people. And right. that's a difference with the kinds of programs that you put in place based on those numbers. Right. And, so, with the, and with the amount of federal and state support that you get for those programs. Because right. you know, once again, this is literally one of those issues of it's your tax dollars at work. Your, your, your tax bill isn't going to change. Your, or your, yeah. The amount that you're paying the federal government isn't going to change based on this. The, the, what may change is how much you're getting back. Exactly. Right. From those tax, tax laws that you're otherwise just sending to Washington and they're just going someplace, you know, right. you know, you know, you know exa our, exactly our ability right. to fix our roads and bit bridges are based on these census numbers. Right. Those are huge numbers. So if I, I understand that you, you, you want people to sign, to sign up and once again, for all those caregivers, for all those seniors that we deal with, you want not only you to sign up, but you want to be telling my dad, you know, and all these folks, you got to get, you got to get this information. In. Right. So Grace, tell me again. What are the questions that you'll never get from a, from, a, from a census worker? So if you get these questions, it's a scam. That's really important, Arthur, to make sure people are aware of that. A legitimate census worker will never ask for your social security number. They will not ask for a checking account number, a credit card number, money, or any donation. So if anyone claiming to be from the census asks any of those questions, close the door on them, hang up on them, delete the email, whatever. I want to be involved. I want to be involved like as a town in, in this effort. What do I do? Well, one of the ways you could be involved is to actually sign up to work for the census itself. Uh, they are in uh, uh, very much of a need for census workers. The uh, pay is $27.20 .20 per hour now. Um, it, it, do that again. $27 an hour? Twenty-seven twenty per hour to be a, a, a part-time part census worker. And it's not all going door to door. Yeah. There are various ways that you can be an employee of the census. So I would encourage people to go to the census website, mm -hmm. www.census.gov forward slash jobs, and they can find out what the possibilities are there for them. I see. Um, so that, empl that employment opportunity is happening federally. There isn't like a, somebody at town hall that they can get down and say, I really at, want to participate. Not at town hall, but if they contact that number, either go on to the website or contact the, the phone number for the census, they would yeah. be able to find out what the jobs are that are available. I get it. And your, and your understanding is that those jobs are available now because they're, they're still... Absolutely. They're they, really are, they are lining up people now. Yeah. They are doing trainings now. Uh, and so even though the census itself won't start with responses until March and April, yeah. there are different roles happening now that people could be a part and of. And that may be a great thing for a lot of seniors, right? Because sure. I, th I would Because I would think that, that once again, given this economy, which is pretty, where, where, the, where unemployment is pretty low, right, they may be having a lot of problem finding folks, mm -hmm. and, but this is not, it's not like a long-term thing, right? Nope. It's going to be over 
When, when, is it, when is it over? Uh, well, or, yeah, I should put it, when does it start and when is it over? How's so that? the responses to the census begin in March, yeah. mid-March, and they will go through the end of April. Mm -hmm. For people who haven't responded by April, and there will be multiple reminders for people if they haven't responded yet, but those who don't respond by the end of April, that's when uh, the knocking on the doors will begin, uh, will be... Uh, the census workers will start going to those locations where we haven't heard from people and trying to get them to complete the census. So that will be starting up in May. In, that'll, that'll start in May. Mm -hmm. And when will it end? By the end of May. They by hope the to have of all of the, the so work you can done by So that's the issue. You've got this. So, you, so it, there aren't a lot of people right. who literally could take a month, right, and work a lot during that month but mm -hmm. not be working on the other two months. So, so you've got this unique population in, in, in retired folks right. who may, and, and, and they're being paid a lot of money per hour, right, mm -hmm. to work for a fairly short period of time on a really useful thing. And, right? and people can set the number of hours that they want to work. So they, the census will be very flexible with people's needs and their abilities. Uh, so we encourage people, if, if you have uh, bills left over from holiday gift giving, uh, this may help this pay may those off. This may be it. This right. may, now, just a couple of other things. So, and, and you, you would ask me to ask you this, I wouldn't have automatically thought of this, but I'm gonna read your question. <laughs> As with anything that is done for a good purpose, ah. it seems inevitable that someone comes up with a way to cause harm. What precautions can people take to avoid potential fraud? And certainly dealing with our folks, they, they, there's, a, there's a lot of senior fraud. So what, what are the scams that have been you know, tried? What, what well, should people be we, looking we out for? We don't know yet what the scams In, are, are that are right. going to be tried. So what should but people the, be what, what doing? The main thing is the census will not contact you by email. The census doesn't have anyone's email. So if you get an email that says, we're calling from, we're contacting you from, from the, the census. census, please respond to your census now, delete that. It is not coming from the census. The census will only send things out by U.S. mail. And once you have responded to the census, one of the things the census does ask is for your phone number. The only reason they ask for that is if something that you've completed on the census form either doesn't make sense or you left a question blank and they want to make sure they're getting the proper answer. So only the census workers will have access to that phone number. That phone number. They will only call it for the specific purposes of the census. They will not share that with any other government agency. And uh, as far as avoiding fraud, so one of those things is if you get an email, ignore it, yep. delete it, especially. If you get a, a phone call, make sure that it says census.gov. And if, if you are ever hesitant about somebody calling you, you can always say, give me your phone number, I will call you back. And if it is a legitimate question, they won't have any issue about giving you their phone, giving number. You their phone number. And you can then call me at the senior center and I can confirm, is that number legitimate coming from the census? Or you can even go online and see, would that be a phone number would that, that phone would number? likely be coming? As far as the door-to-door -door, uh, canvassing that will be done, yep. The census employees will all have a Department of Commerce ID. So you can check that. It will have their photo. It will have their name. You can also, if you are not sure that they are a census worker, yeah. there will be a phone number that you can call to confirm whether, in fact, they are. And we will be putting this information out in our um, Callahan newsletter so that people yeah. are familiar with that. And if you're at all suspicious, call Grace. Yeah, she will absolutely. take care of this. This is really important. I mean, this is really, it's crucial that we do this. It's crucial that we do the census and get it right. Mm -hmm. And we're here, and Grace is here, and folks are here to make sure that your confidentiality, confidentiality is being preserved. So, Grace, thank you so much for doing You're a great yeah. guest. Someday thank you should you. invite me. Maybe I'll be a guest. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.